So let's take a look now at how plants create essential oils. I want to talk about the microscopic look at an essential oil. This is so amazing. In the images that I'm going to show you is the different structures in a plant that is responsible for producing the essential oil. We're going to be looking at these microscopic images of the different structures in a plant that are responsible for producing the essential oil. Now these following images and some of the text that I'm going to be reading to you are excerpts from a book that have been adapted called The Secretory Structures of Atomic and Medicinal Plants. This is a review and atlas of micrographs. Now the oils are created within the oil glands and these can be divided up into three categories. The first category is ducts. Now we find these in the seeds, the woods, the bark, and even in the resins, which form into small little channels. The second category is the secretory cavities, which form within the structure of a leaf or flower. And these are very tiny oil glands. And the third category is the glandular trichomes. And these are found on the outside of the leaf. On an orange tree, the leaf contains tiny little glands, which are where we get pedigreen essential oil from. And you might see that there is very tiny little ducts. If you can hold up the leaf to the light, you could see these. And that's in fact where it gets its name. The simplest structure consists of one single cell. And these leaves that I'm showing you here is of a magnolia and they are individually cells that produce the essential oils or the constituents of the oils, I should say. And so the plant structure is quite simple and that the oil is sampled in the vagical oil of the cell and it's equipped with a membrane. And these cells are isolated and have another internal cellular structure within the cells around it. We see this biosensis of all the constituents of the essential oil that is taking place in the placets, which is the same type of organelle or the chloroplast and the cytoplasm of an oil producing cell. In this picture here, we're looking at this plant, which is the eucalyptus. And you can see here, it possesses a cavity that's surrounded by a large number of oil producing cells within the plant structure. These are so-called excretory cavities and are in a place where the plant produces the essential oil that is being stored. One thing that you probably are quite familiar with, if you've ever picked up an orange and squeezed it with your nail, sometimes that juice will come out. And that's in fact the essential oil. Even in citrus fruits, like an orange, they have cavities lying on the epidermis of the peel. And this also explains why when we're peeling that orange skin off or that rind off, we can smell that citrus essential oil coming off from it. In this picture, we're looking at the cross section of a young leaf of the rosemary plant. We're looking at the structure of the oil glands on top of the plant. So in this structure, this explains why when you're touching a leaf of one of these, such as rosemary, the essential oil is going to be released. Even plants like lavender that has even been dried or squeezed, there's that chance that you touch it, you're going to get some of that essential oil on you. It's going to be released from the glands. In the Lavasia family, these are all sorts of flowers that we're very familiar with, such as lavender. There's very different structures here. And this is, we're looking at in this picture, the epidermis of the plant that has these little spears of glands that are storing the oils and it's surrounded and connected with the epidermis cells. Look at that, it looks like all these thorns are protecting this leaf. And so this is the detail of the lower leaf surface of English lavender. This is actually Lavendula augustifolia. And it's showing you the secretory gland that's been surrounded by the trichomes. And this will help trap this layer of air surrounding the leaf. So it actually helps reduce the transpiration or the water loss of the plant. This picture has been magnified 900 
and 31 times. Now, in this diagram, we see a glandular trichrome, which is actually a hair on the plant that contains an old duck on the end of the hair. And if you can see where the hair is, it's labeled S in this diagram, and the old duck is on top of that, which is labeled O. Secretatory cells labeled H are where the oil is produced by the plant and secretes into the secretatory cavity. Now in this diagram here, we do see a side view of the breakdown and right here, we're looking at where it says stalk cell. This is in fact where the oil is produced and then it moves up into the subcultural oil storage cavity. We find that stems and flowers of these flowering plants are also littered with all of these types of glands. In this next picture we're looking at, this is a cross section of a pine needle of a conivore. And so this has quite a bit more complex structure with the secretatory ducts. So this, you can see the channel-like structure that's throughout this in all conivores. And this ducts is making a connection from the root of the tree all the way up to the leaf, the flower, and the fruit. In this image, we're looking at the magnification of ducts in wormwood. Now, if you can see here, there is actually one side, the left side, you're seeing an old development of a small lumen. And then on the other side, we're looking at the right side here. And we can just see that it has yet been reached the full stage of a lumen. And so the arrows here are pointing out here, if you can see this in the red areas, where the cells might be starting to be pulled apart. The black material between the cells might be the first stages of the breakdown of the middle of the plant. And so under this micrograph, we're looking at all the dark areas between the cells, and this is where the essential oil is stored. Now these channels are composed of central cavity, and they are formed around it like a wall of the cavity, which changes into the secretory epithelial cells. Now the oils that are biosynthesized within this move into the other sections of the cavity, and then the ducts release these oils. So plant cells don't create essential oils per se. They actually produce and create essential oil constituents. And it's a collection of all of these together that forms the essential oil. And so each oil gland contains eight secretorial gland cells. Now the secretorial glands are of the aromatic plants that come in different shapes and sizes in order to ensure a specific function. Now this function consists mainly in the protection of the different organs of the plant and of course in the attraction of pollination. Now the glands location does depend on the function. So the glands of the secretions are localized in all of the plant organs and its leaves in its stems, and even at the root. And so the location of these structures depends on the organ in which they are located and the function and nature of the substances stored, and they are secreted by these glands. This is a single pollen grain of chamomile, and it is magnified 9,313 times of the actual size. Plants have provided humanity with many of the basic important materials required for our day-to-day -day living, which includes oxygen, food, clothing, timber, as well as a source of compounds that we take advantage of as aromatherapists as essential oils, resins. We have rubbers, gums, dyes, pesticides, and drugs ultimately came from plants. Now, plants might be considered biochemical factories, if you will, because they have evolved over the millions of years. So when we're looking up close and we're seeing the various type of secretory structures, this is also influenced and controlled by the genetic and the ecological factors and significantly by the mode of extraction from the plant. This type of secretory structure is important and it differentiates it by its characteristics of the plant family. So in other words, they're not all going to look the same. When we look at the microscopic investigation of a plant structure, it's important for us 
to look at the complex biological research process. And this is going to include the plant growth and the development, the genetics and its breeding. So let's look now at clary sage, which is a glandular trichome with its short hair and the duct of the oil on top. This particular photo is magnified 752 times of its actual size. Isn't that amazing? So plant chemicals are classified as primary and secondary metabolites. The primary metabolites are biochemicals that are essential for the plant growth and survival. We are going to be paying more attention to the essentials, of course, which are complex, volatile mixtures of certain secondary plant metabolites. There's a wide range of species. You have your annual plants, your biannual plants, your perennial herbaceous plants. You've got your evergreen. I mean, there's just so many varieties and trees. These are all producing essential. The ecological and the evolutionary role of this has changed over time. But what they have associated with this is the defense mechanisms against animals, against other plants that may come in their domain, or you even have harmful insects. And so they have to build a resistance to these different attacks. Oh, and also they have to attract insects and animals for pollination. As you read over your lesson, you're going to get a lot more information about this. A common feature in the living cells is the secretion that's involved, the discharge of these substances to the exterior. They have these intercellular cavities. This is a little different. We see these maybe might contain some salts, some latex, some waxes, and so on but they also might contain essentials. And in this picture, I wanna show you something really amazing looking. Because when you look at this, you go, wow, what is that? It looks almost like a loofah plant or something. Well, this in fact is clove bud. And this picture has been magnified. Looking at this, we're showing the endogenous oil glands have been magnified 607 times of its actual size. Isn't that something? It tells you something about clove bud, doesn't it? Now, the secretory cells is really the simplest structure in a single secretion containing a cell. And this next picture I want to show you is something that you would see that development of the cell type, okay? And so plant tissues such as rhizome plants or maybe ginger or some nutmeg, one of these might develop this way. This in fact is ginger and this particular photograph has been magnified 2,149 times of its actual size and this you're looking at the actual ginger essential oil. There are secretory cavities. Now these cavities are more or less spherical structures. They can be formed in two ways and so we we're looking here at a soft plant tissue where it's composed of a thin cell wall, usually right on the surface of the plant. And you can actually see in this next picture, Roman chamomile. If you see those little white little sacs there, the upper leaf structure of Roman chamomile here has been magnified 417 times of its actual size. And you can just see that those little pockets that contain the essential oil. Another group is secretory ducts. Now ducts are elongated cavities and these are often a network extending from the roots throughout the stems to the leaves, flowers, and fruits. And this is something you want to read more about on the website. Take a look at this so you can get more information about it. But I wanted to show you really quickly this particular one. Isn't that cute? It almost looks like a pillow or maybe a bed with a little blanket over it. You're never going to guess what essential this is. It's oregano. Now, oregano in this particular uh, picture is on the surface of the oregano leaf. And it, this has that little pocket there. It's like a little, you know, if you rupture it, it's just like if you were to take an oregano leaf in your hand, maybe even pinch it, that, that little bit of oil is going to be released. This has been magnified 19. 1979 times okay 1970 
nine times of its actual size to show us this. There's epidermal cells. These are essential oils that come from flowers and they're not usually secreted by the glandular hairs, but merely are diffused through the cytoplasm and the cell walls or the cuticle on the outside. And so in this case, you might look at rose or acacia or even jasmine. And when we're looking at this, this next picture I want to show you is actually, uh, isn't that incredible? It almost like little spikes are protecting these little pockets or pillows, if you will, of essential oil. And this is peppermint. This particular picture has been magnifying 742 times of its actual size. And the detail here is showing you the, the calyx surface of the peppermint plant, showing you those little yellow rounded sickle secretory glands. And it's pretty amazing. These glandular trichomes, if you will, are also on other plants as well. This picture we're looking at, this is marjoram, and it has been photographed with a scanning electron microscope. And you can, again, look at your notes and your lesson, and you'll see more about that. I'd like to say thank you to the photographers at Microscopics who allowed me to use these photos. And I'd like for you guys to take a look at this lesson up close so you can read more about the structure of plants and really just get a deeper appreciation for where we're getting our essentials from.